is the Angry Birds lesson on code.org making you angry? I'll help you out. Stick around. Hello, I'm going to walk you through programming with Angry Birds. So this is the first uh, page on it. You definitely want to watch this video. So once you're done watching the video, click continue. All right, for this puzzle, drag all the blocks together and click run to watch it go. So I'm going to be resetting my code just to sort of see. Um, all they're showing you is sort of, a, you know, that you can click these together. If you did another lesson already, you know this, but this is just teaching you the basics. Then you hit run. So it moves forward. It moves forward two times. Now, if you wanted to see how this would be written in code, it says even top universities teach block-based block -based coding. But under the hood, the blocks you assembled can also be shown in JavaScript, which is a programming language, the world's most widely used coding language. And so then it shows you the code that you would have to write in order for it to move forward twice. Nice and easy. All right. We click continue. I'm going to reset my code again. All right. Then it says drag an extra move forward block out of the toolbox to finish your code because we need it to move forward one, two, three times. So we have Okay, one, two, three times, and then we hit run. <laughs> All right, and then you'll see that it just says it three times there. I'll start my code over. This pig is ruffling my feathers. There is one extra block that is going to cause the bird to crash. Throw it away by unhooking it from the gray blocks and dragging it back to the toolbox. Now you could always hit run, or you could think about what is this going to do. So it says move forward, move forward, turn left. So if it moves forward and then moves forward again, it will hit that. So obviously we need to get rid of one of these move forwards. And you can drag the rest. Then it'll turn left and then move forward twice. And in a very basic JavaScript, it says move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward. And then it has move forward, but it has these things. This means it's not being used in the code. I could have dragged it probably into the, the block section to delete it. Yeah, I could have dragged that. All right, let's do this one. Now it says trace the path and lead me to the silly pig. Avoid TNT or feathers will fly. So we need to move. I always like to walk through what it needs to do first. It needs to move forward. Turn right, move forward, turn left, move forward. All right, so we've got move forward, turn right, move forward, turn left, move forward. Let's see if I'm right. I might be wrong. Perfect. And then the code is just the same, nice and easy. Follow this path to get me to the pig. Avoid the TNT. So we need to move forward one, two times. Then we need to turn left. And then we'll be here facing left. We need to move forward two more times. And then we run it. Keep calm and help me find the bad pig. Otherwise, I might get angry. Get the bird to the pig and avoid the TNT. So we could go this way or we could go that way. I'm going to go this way. So we need him to turn left. If you have trouble with those directions, think about being that bird. What direction would you turn? Turn left, then move forward, then turn right. So then we'll be here. We need to move forward one, two, three times. Now watch this. I can say repeat something three times. So move forward three times. Then turn right. And then move forward. Now I could have just dragged three move forwards in there, but it's nice to use the least amount of code as possible. And actually, every little thing of code that you add uses a little bit of electricity. So if your code is cleaner using less uh, 
commands, you're going to use less electricity. It's going to run on the computer better. It won't use as many resources. It's always good to have a clean code. So you'll notice it said eight on a nine block. So they were actually allowing nine blocks, but I used only eight. Let's see if I'm right, though. All right. You'll notice when we look at the code, it says turn left, move forward, turn right. And then it's saying for this, move, do this for a count of three. two times. So that seems right to me. Then it needs to turn right. That's correct. Then it needs to move forward one time. This says move forward twice. That's not correct. So we're here. We're facing this direction. He needs to turn left and then move forward, turn right, move forward. That's perfect. And then one, two times. Is that right? So it turns right and then move forward one, two, three times. Okay. Hopefully I didn't get distracted there. Then it needs to turn right. And it'll be facing that way and move forward again. Now I could have used these repeat uh, commands, but there are some things that I don't think are supposed to move. I'm not sure why these are gray. So. All right, let me show you both ways we could do this. I'm going to run it and make sure it's right. Awesome. Okay, so so that did work, and that was great. Uh, but I could, I could clean this up a little bit. I don't know if it's going to let me. So what I could say is, and this won't really save code, but it's a good way to think. So move forward two times. All right, that gets rid of that. Then turn right, move forward, turn left, move forward, turn right. Did that repeat anything? Turn right, move forward, nope. And then we need to move forward three times. So we could say, repeat this three times, because that'll save one block. Move forward three times and then turn right and move forward. So you'll notice now I used 12 blocks. I think I saved one block. The only thing is, okay. yeah, I won't get rid of that, but I, I saved one block. So that would run better on the computer and then we can test it. It's nice to stay organized. It's nice to use the least amount of code possible. It keeps things clean. When you go, when you go back to it in the future, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what you had done there and why you did it. Easier to find the mistakes. I'm going to start this over. All right. So this one, it needs to move forward, so we know that. And then it needs to turn right. And then we count how many times forward. So one, two, three, four. Now, I could have dragged move forward four times, but that was a lot easier. It uses a lot less code. And it needs to turn right and move forward. And we'll try it. <laughs> we got it. All right. Now is asking questions. Read through the code below very carefully. What will happen when you click run? So I'm not even going to read this, okay? Maybe I chose the right answer already. I'm not sure, but let's see. So it's going to turn left, meaning it'll be facing this way, then turn left again. It's going to face this way. And it's going to move forward, so it'll get right here. Then it's going to turn left, so it's facing up. Then it's going to move forward three times. One, two, three. So it'll make it to the pig. And then we run it to make sure. Ah, 
All right, and then we can look at the. Oops. All right. This is the last one. Let me start this over. I'll walk you through why I did it. So now help me sneak up on the pig any way you want to. So the way I see it is I want it to move the least amount possible. Um, it looks like we'll have to have multiple turns anyway. So I'm going to have it move over here. So it'll move forward one, two, three. So I can say repeat three times, move forward. And then I want it to turn right so it's facing this way. And then I need it to move one, two, three times. And then turn left. I hope that's the correct direction. I'm here, so then it needs to move forward one, two, three. Let's see how it works. Got it. All right. Very cool. Very cool. All right. I think that's it. Yep. Awesome. Well, have a wonderful day, and I'll try to make some more videos soon on this. Thanks.